Zaxby's has been perfecting chicken fingers for 30 years. And now we're going to the sea! Shrimp butterflied and fried to perfection. And a perfect blend of Zax sauce and cocktail sauce called Zax Tail Sauce. The perfect southern fried shrimp meal. Woo, saucy! Zaxby's. Joe Dredge. Hey, hey, hey. Mornings on WROK. Over 95 years in the books and, and still, still on, on top. top. This is Rockford's News Talk 1440 WROK. Six minutes after six, News Talk 1440 WROK. It's Riley and Joe. It's a Monday morning and it's, uh, well, it's the start of a nice looking week. Real nice week. Clear and sunny in 50 right now. No feels like because no wind. Uh, humidity's at 82%. We're looking at a daytime high today now of 83. We've been upgraded a few degrees. So, yeah, 83 is what we're looking at. Uh, mix of clouds and sun, a 1% chance of precipitation. Wow. 54 is the low tonight. Tomorrow we're at 86. Uh, basically all sun all day and a 1% chance of precipitation. Uh, overnight lows, 57. A little cooler on Wednesday at 71 and partly sunny and a 3% chance. Thursday is 70, partly sunny and a 1% chance. And Friday is sunny and 75 and a 2% chance. Okay. So we, we've got a really nice looking week kicking off starting out this morning. Started off Saturday. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, work week kicking off this morning, but uh, yeah, yeah, the weekend itself weekend was very, very pleasant. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So uh, no complaints on nope. the weather front, and it uh, doesn't look like we're going to have any this week as well. Overnight lows 54 tonight, 57 Tuesday night, 45 Wednesday night, 43 Thursday night, and 45 on Friday night. Okay. So still get a little cool at night as well. Be all right. Top over and look at the almanac now for our Monday, May 22nd, 142nd day of the year, 223 remain. Highlight the History was on this date in 1992 after a rain that lasted nearly 30 years. Johnny Carson hosted NBC's Tonight Show for the very final time. Jay mm-hmm. Leno took over as host uh, about three days later. I have very, uh, very vivid memories of that of that evening. Me I was, too. Uh, I was in seventh grade, and uh, I was uh, it was I think last day of school was coming up here, and we had a huge social studies project that I was working until midnight to do and uh, uh part of that was used watching uh, johnny carson's last show <laughs> i was was not doing homework the whole night right my parents might have thought i was in the basement but we were watching johnny carson yep it uh it was uh it was a terrific week the the entire week yeah, it was. Uh, to, mm-hmm. to, to say goodbye and, uh, and all that his last two guests uh robin williams and bet midler Bette midler yep mm-hmm. robin williams and bet midler were the uh, were the final two guests on uh, on the tonight show big time show Big time. Did you have a musical guest uh, last show? I bet. Yeah, Bet sang. Oh, yeah, Bet did sing. Yep, That's Bet right. sang mm-hmm. to him, and uh, yeah, he came out and uh, he pulled up a, a stool on the uh, stage for the monologue, which he never did. He That's always right. walked out and stood. But uh, yeah, this time, uh, yeah, brought out uh, brought out a stool and uh, did uh, did his uh, did his monologue from that very very low key, deliberately low key exit. Did Johnny always have a band on his show? Yes, he did. Okay, mm-hmm. all right, he was yep, uh, always he started did. doing that. The, the you know two seconds of guest, and then the last segment was. Uh, was either music or, or, or comedian, right? Or uh, at a one time authors as well. Uh, oh, okay. Very, very big. But uh, yeah, started in 1962, wrapped it up in 92, quoting him this show tonight is our farewell show. It's going to be a little quieter. It's not going to be a performance show. Now, we don't want this to be mawkish. It's a farewell show, and there's a certain sadness among the staff here. But look on the bright side. You won't have to read or see one more story about me leaving this show. <laughs> he was aware. Oh man, the the twelve months after he had announced in May uh, of the year before, uh, there was a there was a lot that was packed into that. A lot of uh, questions and you know what's going on and you know he preferred Letterman to take over his spot. NBC went with Jay, mm-hmm. so there was some ugliness there and and and, and all of that. But uh, yep, that was uh, that was a big one. Was uh, would you say your most watched uh, night show? Yeah, easily. Easily? Easily. For uh, for a while, was that what you did at 1037? Yeah, caught the Tonight Show caught model. Caught the Tonight Show? Okay. And I remember oh, being, that's, that's... As, as a kid being uh, being delighted uh, at being allowed to stay up uh, on like a Friday night to see the see Johnny's monologue. Meant to hang out with Dad and watch the first part of Carson before going to bed. Was he the one? I'm not, I know he wasn't the first late night talk show, but was he the one that kind of cemented that format? Because we still do that format. They all do it. Steve they, Allen created it. 
the uh, the well, I mean, and the format, but like this is how it works. You know, a monologue, then uh, a goofy bit, guest, guest performance. Steve Allen. Steve Allen did that. Kind the whole of- ga- the 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 uh, the desk, the couch, the mm-hmm. chair. That format coming out, opening up with some jokes, sitting down, uh, doing uh, doing a bit, bringing out your guests. Okay. Yeah, all of that. Uh, that could all be uh, all be laid in the lap of Steve Allen, who created that format. Rather remarkable that that specific, and they all do it. Yep. They, they have all done it. Even even go back to Craig Ferguson, you know, who kind of issued the model mm-hmm. and did it his own way. He had that was his that was his format. Monologue, bit, guest, guest, performance. Yep. They still do that today. Because it works. It works. And they've tried other variations uh-huh. on it. We've put chairs in a circle. We've done this. We've done a mid, uh, mid-show mid monologue and all that. No. Just it just doesn't work. Just doesn't work. We're, not, we're, we're just so programmed to those beats yep. in the late night show that... Uh, Wow, yeah, that's that's great. I want to I want to know what live. Uh, I, I I mean, all 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 viewership everywhere has gone down. I just wonder if anybody catches these live anymore. Because even when I was, I'd say the I wasn't huge in the late night world. Uh, well, I did watch a lot of Letterman. Got really, really. We've talked about it before. Really, really into Ferguson uh, for a while, and I was watching that pretty much live for maybe two two years. Uh, but I got to assume most everything is just DVR now. Just TV yard, and you, and you can fast forward through. Guess you don't like this monologue's not working. Oh, this is a dumb bit they do. We, we can go through that. We just, recorded and uh, and well, we didn't have DVR then. Yeah. But uh, we have recorded and or DVR'd everything for the past thirty years. Um, mm-hmm. when, when Spencer was born, um, we we recorded everything because I can remember hearing a couple of friends talk about oh how their kid drives them crazy just as they're into a show that they love so mm. much and blah blah they're crying and they want something oh it just drives them and I thought I I don't want to be mad about that so we just recorded everything kid cries kid needs something pause, pause. stop go deal with it come back hit start pick it up again or wait it, wait till they're in bed you know uh-huh. and then generally we would but in case there was a wake up there there was this there was that it, it always just worked better for us to record everything mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh I, I never understood those who didn't and ended up being furious with a kid or whatever that they missed it yeah outside of sports uh yeah there's just no more live viewing just isn't it's right <laughs> just there just isn't, isn't. <laughs> there isn't much of a need for no. it mm-hmm. on 1939 on the state foreign ministers of germany and italy joaquin von ribbentrop and galeazzo siano signed a pact of steel that committed the two countries to a military alliance 1960 an earthquake of magnitude 9.5 the strongest ever measured struck southern chile killed 1655 people wow. 1962 on this date, Continental Airlines Flight 11 en route from Chicago to Kansas City, Missouri, crashed after a bomb apparently brought on board by a passenger exploded, killed all 45 occupants of the Boeing 707. Mm. 1968 on this date, the nuclear-powered submarine USS Scorpion with 99 men aboard sank in the Atlantic Ocean. The remains of the sub were later found on the ocean floor 400 miles southwest of the Azores. 1969 on this date, the lunar module of Apollo 10 with Thomas Stafford and Eugene Cernan aboard flew within nine miles of the moon's surface in a dress rehearsal for the first lunar landing. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. We got real close. You're real nine mm, miles. Yeah. I bet you could see quite a bit. 85 on the state, U.S. sailor Michael Walker arrested aboard the aircraft carrier Nimitz two days after his father, John A. Walker Jr., was apprehended. Both were later convicted of spying for the Soviet Union. Mm. Michael Walker, 15 years in prison, was released in 2000. 2006 on this date, the Department of Veterans Affairs said personal data, including social security numbers of 26.5 million American veterans, stolen from a VA employee after he took the information home without being authorized to do so. Mm, Don't do that. 2011 on this day, the tornado devastated Joplin, Missouri. Winds up to 250 miles an hour, killed at least 159 people and destroyed 8,000 homes and businesses. Mm -hmm. 2020 on this date, Full House star Lori Loughlin and her fashion designer husband Massimo Giannulli pleaded guilty After paying half a million dollars into the University of Southern California as part of a college admissions bribery scheme, Lachlan would spend two months in the joint. Gina Lee began a five-month sentence in November of 2020, released to home confinement last month, or rather April of 2021. April of 2021. That was a pretty crazy story we were were following for a while there. Felicity Huffman. I was uh, was about to say, it was Felicity Huffman and, and, and her... Uh, I always felt that Felicity got off far easier than uh, uh, than Lori Laughlin. Was that because of cooperation, or was there more involved? 
You got me. I think it might have been now uh, both uh, Lori and her husband, Lori Lachlan, and her husband involved. Whereas uh, Felicity Huffman apparently was involved, but William H Macy had no idea. was uh, hanging no around idea. Binnie's and, uh, <laughs> and, and and didn't know anything about it. No, he had no <laughs> idea. Apparently, that's uh, what it the says, court found. Anyway, uh, it says some things about Bill H Macy. Right? Well, it says right, a but, whole yeah. lot about the communication in that marriage going on, doesn't it? <laughs> right. Wow. It was ten years he, ago, and at some point, he probably just said. Do you know how much money we have? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We didn't need to do we this. We didn't need to do any of this. Yeah, maybe he washed his hands of the whole deal, but <laughs> right. I'm not doing this. And uh-huh. by the way, uh, I'm not going to jail because you got sloppy. <laughs> yep. T- ten years ago in this day, Lois Lerner, Internal Revenue Service supervisor whose agents had targeted conservative groups, swore to a House committee she didn't do anything wrong and then claimed the Fifth Amendment on every single question she was asked. It's a good move, that Fifth you, Amendment move. Probably was for her. <laughs> right. It's five years ago in this day, novelist Philip Roth, whose books include Portnoy's Complaint and the Pulitzer Prize winning American Pastoral, died in New York at the age of 85. It was also five years ago in this day, a judge in upstate New York awarded, or rather ordered, a 30-year-old man to get out of his parents' house after they went to court to have him ejected. Mm-hmm. I remember following that one. Yeah, the and, whole the whole squatters situation. Yeah, and with your mom odd. and dad, and you're behaving horribly, and mom and dad are like, "Look, you're 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 breaking us, and you're a horrible person to live with. You need to move out. You're 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 30 some years old. Mm-hmm. No, I won't no. go. Well, we can make you." <laughs> so they went to court, and the court made him move out. It was a year ago on this date, Kate McKinnon, Pete Davidson departed from Saturday Night Live, leaving the sketch institution without arguably two of its more famous names after its 47th season finale. But Pete Davidson killing it in those Taco Bell commercials. It's Peter Davidson because he likes to keep it simple <laughs> before 11 a.m. Yes, he does. <laughs> You've seen him. <laughs> I have. They, in no way, shape, matter, or form, make me want to purchase Taco Bell. Not particularly. Not at all. Not particularly. I like, I, I, I think I'm in the minority, but I, I like Pete Davidson. He makes me laugh. He's just a funny, he's just a funny looking guy. He's just, he's just a funny dude. I think uh, for many of us, it's just, I don't get it. Yeah, that's it. I don't. I get it. Yeah, he's not. I don't think I don't find him wildly (laughs) hilarious. Um, I I don't find him to be a good actor. He's a horrible actor. (laughs) I don't know what it is. What sort of deal was struck? No, there's a deal. But there's somebody's a deal. soul is getting passed to somebody else when this is all yeah, said and done. But Pete's enjoying it while it happens. He might as well. <laughs> yeah. He might as well. Over to the birthdays. If today's your big day, happy birthday. Leading off the birthday list, you've got conductor Peter Nero at the age of 89. Actor and director Richard Benjamin is 85. Retired MLB All-Star pitcher and uh, the guy they named the surgery after, Tommy, Tommy John. John. Yeah, Tommy John and, is 80 today. And Pat Manley's father-in-law. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you have surgery? Yeah. I had the me. In the me. Yeah, yeah. I had the me. Uh-huh. Uh, song ringer, song writer, rather, Bernie Taupin at mm. 73, he longtime had, partner of Elton John. It's pits. Singer Morrissey at 64. R&B singer Johnny Gill is 57. Model Naomi Campbell at 53. Uh, actress Allison Eastwood. Yes, that is Clint's daughter. Okay. She's 51. Mm-hmm. Actress Jennifer Goodwin at 45. Olympic gold medal speed skater Apollo Anton Ono oh. at 41. Actress Molly Ephraim from Last Man's Standing is 37, and tennis player Novak Djokovic is 36. Joker. And there is your birthday list and your almanac for Monday, May 22nd of 2023. That was a decent birthday list. Not bad. All right. We've had some stinkers lately. Yes, we have. Yes, this we was have. nice to see. All right. And the biggest highlight, probably Johnny Carson's uh, Got to go with show. that one. Yeah, Johnny's last show. Not, not often. There, there are a few on the list where I, I remember where I was when uh, when you say it happened. And, uh, yeah, that's a... Uh, I say, they say, Con- where, where were you when you watched uh, Johnny's last show? Just at home? Uh, uh, Amy and I were on the couch. Okay. Yep. yep. Amy and I were on the couch and I recorded it and I was going through some stuff not long ago. The VHS tape that I uh, had stuck oh, in so for, that- for that week, I believe, is uh, is still sitting there. I forget. Was that a watch party thing? Were, were people setting up like <sighs> things at their house or were bars showing it? You know, I don't know. I probably, I would imagine there probably were at some point. But uh, I just thought the best spot for it was home. Well, that's where everyone enjoyed it was by themselves. That was a show. Most people, you know, watch Johnny Carson between their yeah. two feet. It's a uh, show you didn't really share with anybody except for the closest loved ones. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I remember seeing a cartoon one time, having trouble watching Johnny Carson. Here, let me make it easy on it. The guy had glued a foot on either side of the screen. <laughs> so, oh, that's better. Yeah, I like to. I watch between my feet at night, and if I can't do that, then it's uh, then it's weird. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So there you go. Six twenty News Talk fourteen forty. W R O K. People, but.
over 95 years in the books and, and still, still on top. top. This is Rockford's News Talk 1440 WROK. 635 News Talk 1440 WROK. It's Riley and Joe. It's a Monday morning and a great looking one. It's going to be a beautiful day as well. Sunshine and 51 right now. No feels like because we don't have any wind going on. Headed for a daytime high today of 83. Won't have anything going on as far as rain goes then either. 1% is our chance of precipitation and there should be a lot more sun than clouds today. Even more so tomorrow as we hit 86 and it looks like all sun all day and a 1% chance. Wednesday's a little cooler, 71 with a 3% chance and partly sunny skies. Thursday is 70, partly sunny and a 1% and Friday is 75 and sunny with a 2%. Sounds good. Got a dry, sunny week, so Mm -hmm. see if you can muster up the enjoyment for it. I'm already here. Yeah, me too. Uh-huh. Me too. Uh, you uh, you spent some time working in Chicago and all that. You uh, ever know anybody or talk to anybody who was a vendor at uh, at, at Brinkley? Yeah, Barry Rosner. Barry Rosner Barry, was. Barry, I remember Barry. Yeah, Barry, great guy. Uh, yeah, Barry. Barry was a uh, was the uh, beer guy for a long, long time. Yeah, long time. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's uh, that's kind of how we made a lot of connections early in his career. Was. Uh, uh, was, was working there, but uh, yeah, he loved he loved it. But Barry's the kind of guy that can do that. Uh, uh, it takes a very specific person to do that. And uh, in in what way? Uh, well, you have to be. Uh, you gotta have some strength. You gotta you gotta be strength. Uh, have strength, no matter what uh, what those uh, men and women look like. They're all tough as nails. Uh, uh, walking around there. Uh, uh, I mean, all all the steps. Uh, that thing, especially. Especially the beer folks, that is it. That is a heavy, uh, he- heavy bucket they're carrying around there, and it's not always nice at uh, at, at Wrigley Field. Oh no, no, or anywhere, no. Or, or anywhere. So, uh, uh, and you got to be able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, quick math. I, I mean, you got to be able to talk to people. You got uh, there's a lot of people skills that go in, in, into it all. Sure, it's make a make change on the fly. It's a tough gig. It's a tough gig, and uh, it's kind of fascinating the way it's. Uh, uh, the way it's 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 doled out. Uh, I guess each day, and maybe it's where I don't know anything to do with it about, but I guess each day before the park, you kind of line up in seniority, and uh, and that's that's how you pick. So you you pick uh, you pick a what you what you're going to sell that day and what section you're going to sell. I think like Wrigley's divided up into uh, six sections. Uh, no vendors in the bleachers. Uh, six sections, and you pick uh, yeah what you want to sell and where you're going to sell it, and and on and on, and then. Uh, the longest person there gets number one pick, and the the new guy gets the last pick. They're the ones selling probably cotton candy. I believe that's the bottom of the list is cotton candy. No, nobody really wants it. It's not that expensive. You're not no. going to make a ton of money off. Yeah, it, you're so. not getting a lot of hands up in the air. Hey, uh, mm-hmm. cotton candy for the whole aisle. Yeah, the hot dog, the hot dog guy, the uh, the, the the water, uh, the water one and beer. I think are, are the top top three that you want to you want to sell. Okay. I could do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. so at one point maybe I could have done that. Yeah, at one point at one point I could have I, I that's not for me. That, that's uh that's a young person's game. Oh, I could believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, the reason yeah. I ask is uh, WGNTV.com, Wrigley Field vendor, gives inside look at the job through social media oh, videos. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, and this is a guy, you're on TikTok, so mm-hmm. you, you should probably follow him. Yeah. Uh, Jonath Fialco. Jonath Fialco. Okay. F-I-A-L-K-O-W. Fialco, I'm guessing is how you sure. pronounce it. Started vending at uh, Wrigley Field in 2015 while he was looking for a summer job. But uh, this season his uh, first uh, is his first creating videos and a community about it. Okay. Just finished his senior year of high school, was looking for something to do before he went down to the University of Illinois. Mm-hmm. Quote, one of my dad's, uh, one of my friend's dad's used to vend back in the day, and a lot of the vendors are still there that my buddy's dad used to vend with. So he put us in contact with the people he knew. I emailed them like, hey, do you guys need help this summer? I'm a huge Cub fan. Would love to come and work for you. And they're like, yeah, we actually do. Nice. So he and a couple of his friends would drive down to Wrigley from the northern suburbs to vend at Cub Games. This season, he started posting videos on TikTok and Instagram, giving people an inside look at the job and the stories of the vendors at Wrigley Field. Fun stories. Quote, I thought it would be cool to give people an inside look and then also share the stories of the history behind Wrigley. And some of the guys who've been there for 50 or 60 years try to digitalize their stories and share them a little bit easier. Nice. That's what I love doing. A painter spreads joy and helps family through sports art. Well, these videos have been viewed hundreds of thousands of times on TikTok and Instagram. And Fialco and his vendor colleagues have become recognizable there because of it. Mm -hmm. Quoting, I started like a week before opening day. And even by opening day, three people recognized me at that first game. And I was like, whoa, this is kind of weird. A few months later... People are stopping him more than a dozen times a game to say hi, get a photo with him, and get an autograph. Wow. 
Someone on Mother's Day DM'd me. They were like, hey, my mom loves your videos. Can you send me a quick video for Mother's Day shouting it out? Somebody might have worked his way into like a social media manager position. Kind of looks that way. Yeah. It's not just him who's getting recognized. He's been sharing stories of his colleagues, including his mentor, a guy named Uncle Ronnie, who has been a vendor at Wrigley for more than 50 years. Wow. He one game said, Jonah, I got recognized twice because they're all like, hey, you're Uncle Ronnie from TikTok. And I was like, Ronnie, isn't that great? He goes, it's not great. It's fabulous. <laughs> Good for Ronnie. He, uh, Fialco also runs uh, Bracketology TV, which is a fantasy gaming startup for reality TV. Uh, the videos uh, in his business are helping create a community. Oh. Whole idea is make people feel more connected. So even if one person messages me and say they feel more connected to the Cubs or they moved out of town and my videos make them feel more connected to Wrigley and kind of their past when they lived here before, I feel like it's a win. This kid's uh, just out of high school, too? Yeah. Wow. I love those interactions. Well, he was. Uh, started vending in 2015 looking for oh, a summer job. 2015. Okay, yep. so he's been there for uh, yep. about eight years now. Okay. I love interactions I'm having with fans. Just had an absolute blast getting to know the older guys, listening to some of the stories that they used to vend back in the day when peanuts, you know, were 10 cents for mm-hmm. a bag. It's for me as a diehard Cubs fan. It's really cool to hear those stories firsthand from some of the guys who've experienced it for over 50 years. We're having a blast. That's really cool. Yeah, I I think that's kind of cool. And uh, Thrillist.com, uh, I like this, everything you've ever wanted to know about Wrigley Field beer vendors. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And they uh, they spotlight all-star beer vendor Rocco Caputo, a 32-year veteran of the job, who even earned a plaque after calling out Cubs chairman Tom Ricketts for dumping out hot dogs on undercover boss to get the lowdown on how to hawk beer inside the friendly confines. Do you remember that? I do. When he was throwing throwing away hot dogs that he couldn't sell? Yep. Yeah, that was great. You can't do that. <laughs> Seniority rules, apparently. He started working at Wrigley when he was 16. Uh, still got 40 guys ahead of him with more service time. This piece is from about uh, 2016. Uh, elder statesmen get assigned regular territories, first dibs on beer brands at a sellout game. There'll be up to 120 beer vendors working. If there's shorter attendance, the rookies have to move down a peg to selling hot dogs or pop. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very clear hierarchy in the vendor oh, world. Oh, without a doubt. Yes. A lot of factors uh, affect sales. Day games are better than night games because you can sell through the 8th as opposed to just the 7th. A rivalry game boosts sales. Padres game in May, not so much. Mm-hmm. For weather, not too cold, not too hot. Rain, expectedly, ruins everything. Vendors are aware if the starting pitcher works fast, like when Mark Burley was on the mound for the White Sox, or more methodical. Pitching changes, they say, are a blessing. Yes, they are. I yeah, these uh, yeah these guys probably hate the new rules. Getting games in under three hours, probably. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There are some on the job hazards. Um, you got to avoid things like cutting your finger on the lip of a can as you uh, nail the grip on a double pour, or having your your beer tub, which is a twenty five pound weight around your neck when full, blocking your view of kids running around. But nothing hurts more than the agony of dropping a full beer, which comes out of your pocket. Oh, it does. Okay. Yep. Yep. Out yeah, of your pocket. I, I kind of wonder if they have to pay for like. Do they pay for that bucket? That's a good at, question. At the vendor, like, here's $500. I'm going to fill this bucket, and then you get to keep whatever on, on the back. Or I, I, I just wonder how that works. That's a good mm-hmm. one. Um, most Wrigley vendors will double down and work White Sox games, too, although given the choice, it's usually easier to move units at Cub games. Rocco has sold beer at Blackhawks games, uh, Bears games, and Bulls games as well. Hmm. Uh, you, you can draw a pretty good salary. Really? It says stadium beer stale stats are harder to find than a sensible explanation of uh, of whip. There are some uh, scratch math things you can do to figure out a beer seller's salary, at least in the ballpark. If a vendor works every home game, you can move an average of 10 cases of beer per game. That's 240 beers on uh, 50 cent tips alone. There's also a commission on each beer. They can draw a five-figure salary in a season. That's pretty good. That's not bad at all. Mm-hmm. You might be getting served by a middle school history teacher, too. Yeah. Thanks to part-time flexibility, beer vending is a second job for most people. Among staff, school teachers, construction workers, and more, even a mail carrier. A mail carrier is right up their alley. Yep, mm-hmm. it really is. Uh, most talk with some variation of cold beer here. A guy named Mark Reiner works the area along third base and sings pop tunes with beer-centric lyrics. Like it. If that like doesn't impress lot. your day to the ball game, you probably should go to the pen. Right. But, uh, yeah, so that's a little background on uh, on being the beer vendor at Wrigley Field. Yeah, and uh, like you said, that just goes into more of the, uh, like I said, it's a 
It's a very unique job but, uh, that takes a, a specific set of skills that I don't know if they're applicable to many uh, many more places. But yeah, you got to be you gotta be friendly. You got to be funny. You got to be uh, yeah. You got to be alert. You got to. I mean. Can't have a bad day. No, because people don't care if you're having a bad day. They're at the ballpark and yeah. want a beer. Can't have a bad ankle. You know? No. <laughs> you know? I, I mean, watched a beer vendor at uh, uh, Cub Spring training uh, at Sloan Park in Mesa do a tumble down uh, oh, uh, down a flight of stairs uh, with the full beer rig and stuff flying everywhere. Nobody needs that. Oh, it, it looked terrible. And this guy, you could tell, was hurt because uh, when he got up, I mean, he could barely put pressure on one leg. Yeah. And there were other vendors coming down and taking his supply and adding it to theirs. Other was trying to come down and help him get back up and off the field or be near the field, get him out of there. He's out 150 bucks for the beers that he spilled. Right. Yeah, yeah that was a bad day. You, and, could, you could just tell from looking at him. And he can't come back tomorrow. He's got to ice his knee. Yep. Yeah, that's a tough go. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. it's going to be great in Mesa this year, except for that falling down the stairs carrying a full beer uh, kit. I didn't know that they hired uh, uh, kids as young as yeah you know, eighteen to do this. I guess it makes sense. You, you could, but uh, I, I I would. I'm also surprised that they'd be available. But this, it seemed to me to be a sought after position. I would like think they, yeah, there'd not, be a waiting list for not, people. Yeah, wait, yeah, exactly. A waiting list. Like you you'd put your name on it when you're in eighth grade hoping to get there by, you know, uh your your junior year at college. What um, would you rather do? Dogs or uh beers? Mm, sell to sell. That's good. But I would have to I'd have I would need to know the financial breakdown of the difference between those. But uh if it, assuming they're equal, oh, that's a good one. Dogs or beers? Because I feel like the beers are heavier, but the dogs are hot. Right. Yeah, I mean, I and if it's a hot day, it's a hot day. You got mm-hmm. that steam and metal just against your side. Uh, you can throw hot dogs. I feel like that's a little bit easier. True. Uh, not that probably at the end of the day, I'd rather do hot dogs. All things being equal, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, if if the pay came out close to being the same, yeah, I think I'd rather be the hot. Then dog I don't guy. Have to worry about carding anybody spilling, spilling, or uh, sir, you've already had seven hot dogs this inning. You can't have another one. Yeah, I one. can't. I've, I've got to cut you <laughs> off from the hot dogs, sir. Yeah, you're not cutting anybody yeah, off. Yeah, your sodium intake is sky high at this point, sir. I can't let this continue. Yeah, I think uh, having to pass mustard and relish every, every hot dog might get a little annoying, but after, but that's that's the only bad part. But yeah, on the, on the hot days, on the hot days, Karen, carry on that steaming trunk of hot dogs. That sounds very uncomfortable. And, yep. And uh, which, which, do you, which one of those do you think you smell worse at the end of the day? That's a good one. Pouring beer or uh, lugging around steamed hot dogs all day? I'm, that's going to be a toss-up. That up. is a toss-up. That's up. a tough one. We'd have to ask someone who actually does it, but i got to think they're close. Yeah, because you're either going to smell like uh, stale beer yeah, uh-huh. or stale hot dog water. <laughs> right. Mm. Which one? Mm, the sense of the ballpark. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't meet a date immediately <laughs> after work. I, I go home first. Being very nostalgic about the game. 648 News Talk 1440 WROK. As the weather warms up. Zaxby's has been perfecting chicken fingers for 30 years, and now we're going to the sea. Shrimp butterflied and fried to perfection. And a perfect blend of Zach sauce and cocktail sauce called Zach's Tail Sauce. The perfect southern fried shrimp meal. Woo, saucy! Zaxby's.